Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy here for your daily dose of the roars as I scream about the very, very stupid stuff going on in the world of technology right now so I can earn money to fund a Silicon Dojo. Uh, basically, free to end user hands on technology education in Durham, North Carolina. We have classes every couple of weeks. If you're interested in the classes and can come, they are in person. Take a look at our schedule at silicondojo.com. If you want to help support the project, there's a donor box link down below. And with that, wow. AI. I don't know if AI is going to eat the world, but by God, it's going to eat all the RAM. <laughs> it's going to eat all the RAM. So this is a bit of a shocker to me. So, uh, so I've been talking about this for a while. We're basically all of this AI hyperscaling fraud, and I will keep calling it a fucking fraud, right? Basically is eating up a uh, hardware uh, beyond the GPUs, right? So we think about AI and you think about NVIDIA GPUs or maybe AMD or maybe even A6 processors, those types of things. But in order to get those systems run, you need all of the other components in a system. You need motherboards, you need cases, you need RAM, you need platter drives, you need flash drives and the whole nine yards. Uh, and one of the big things is when uh, you have um, Sam Altman come out and talk about spending $1.4 trillion in CapEx expenses to a hyperscale AI, one of the things you might not be thinking about is how much RAM that requires. Apparently, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. It's like, wow, this is this is so much worse than I thought it was. So uh, this is coming from uh, WCCF Tech. SK Hynix uh, to boost DRAM production by a whopping eight times next year, but it still won't be enough to ease ongoing memory shortage. So you have a RAM uh, uh, manufacturer going to increase production by eight at eight X and you're still gonna be sucking wind. And I think that's one of the things to really be thinking about, right? When we hear about this AI fraud, right? We hear about how these major big tech companies are trying to swindle the entire United States and most of the global economy in order to build their absolute and utterly insane horse crap. I don't quite think people fully realize just how much money this is and then just how many resources this crap will eat. One of the things I talk about before is back in 2011, 2012, I went to Cisco Live. So Cisco Live was Cisco's main conference back when I was down in Orlando. Uh, and IoT and IOE was the big thing at the time. They were still talking about IOE. They don't talk about it anymore. Anyways, basically the idea that everything, every computer device will be connected or every electronic device will be connected to the internet. There was a concept that every single household would have 200 IP addresses that were connecting, right? So you think about the microwave and your oven and your Kindle and your phone and your scale and all that kind of stuff. The important thing to understand, now it was over 10 years ago, but the important thing to understand was that the addressable market for that, the addressable market, the market, not the investment, the market for that was $1 trillion. That wasn't there's going to be a trillion dollars of investment in order to get X amount of return. It was, oh my golly, can you believe how big this market is? It's a $1 trillion market. So think about this. Cisco, and this is Cisco, and they're, they're blowing smoke just like everybody else blows smoke because this was valuable to them, was saying uh, on the global stage, basically turning everything IP addressable, <laughs> the entire market for that, the market is a trillion dollars. And then you get your revenue, you get your profit somewhere out of that mess. So that's where I talk about with Sam Altman talking about $1.4 trillion just in the CapEx expenses. That's just a very basic investment into the infrastructure that he wants to build. That's not, that's not everything else. So when you talk about $1.4 trillion of servers and UPSs and switches and routers and the whole nine yards, that is just a tremendous amount of hardware. And the thing is, since these uh, assholes basically have uh, limitless uh, pocketbooks, right? Their uh, 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 tech oligarchs are essentially printing money at this time uh, with methods that are becoming ever more suspect. The thing is, they can come in, they're gonna buy, they, 
They want to buy all of the hardware and financially they have enough money to buy more than anybody else can. And so that is going to skew the markets for everybody. That's, that's where we talk about with JP Morgan, literally think about this during the AI boom, they are downgrading Dell and HP enterprise because Dell and HP enterprise are not going to be able to get enough hardware to be able to sell uh, computers, right? This, this isn't that people have fallen out of love with Dell or HP enterprise or that Dell and HP Enterprise no longer produce good quality equipment so people aren't buying it. No, this is simply people will continue to want to buy from these companies. The companies will not be able to ship product because there will not be enough hardware available to them. Uh, so coming from this article, one of the largest DRAM manufacturers, SK Hynix, plans to increase production by a significant level to cater to shortages. However, it appears that demand is currently too high. We have reported on memory shortages extensively in recent days, and the supply chain is already preparing for adjustments by increasing production capabilities. According to a report by the Korean media outlet uh, Hankyung, uh, SK Hynix uh, plans to expand its uh, DRAM production capacity by more than eight times by 2026 to meet the requirements of CSPs and companies such as NVIDIA, AMD. Uh, it is reported that SK Hynix's uh, Itchion Campus 1C DRAM production is expected to decrease by 140,000 units per month, currently at 20,000 units, which represents a significant rise. So basically, they currently create 20,000 units per month, and they're going to go up to 140,000 units per month. The capacity increase will be allocated towards production uh, products like GDDR7 modules and low-power uh, so can memory that has seen massive adoption over the months in AI servers. So this is the stuff that AI servers is going to eat up. However, it is still important to note that efforts to upscale DRAM production will be targeted entirely towards the AI industry. And that's one of the things I've been talking about with all of this money, right? You have this manufacturing capacity. Who do you want to sell to? Do you want to sell bits and bytes and, you know, bobbles basically to the consumers? Or do you just want to sell a metric crap ton, ton to one or maybe five different uh, customers and make all of your money? Uh, hence, for the consumer segment, there is still a long way ahead before shortages end. Even with the efforts DRAM suppliers are making, the demand is still far too high, as according to an earlier estimate, the data center buildouts occurring worldwide require DRAM inventory levels that suppliers would take years to reach. So even 8xing their production is nowhere near close to what we need. For comparison, OpenAI's Stargate project alone, so this is that stupid ass Stargate project that Trump really likes. Uh, is expected to utilize 900,000 DRAM wafers per month. What? The wafer. The wafer. So that gets chopped into the different ships. 900,000 wafers per month just for Stargate. Accounting for at least 40% of the total supply at current levels. One project by OpenAI is, is slated to consume 40% of the total global supply of DRAM. Even if Korean suppliers scramble to build capacity, we still aren't adjusting uh, the demand expected to be driven by products such as uh, high, band, high bandwidth memory 4 uh, and 4E, which is, suggests that DRAM, the, the DRAM super cycle still has a long way to go. So, uh, so yeah, that's, that's basically uh, what is occurring here. There's so much money being dumped into uh, uh, computer hardware right now uh, that the vendors, the manufacturers are stepping up. But ev even when you in increase your output by 8x, 8x, that's a lot, right? That, that, still, that still is not going to put a dent in this new market. And th this, is, this is one of the reasons why I'm so concerned about this AI fraud, right? The more you look at, the more you look at AI, the more it looks like VR, the more it looks like Bitcoin, or not Bitcoin, but blockchain, the more it looks like that these big tech companies, it's not that you need AI, it's not that the world needs AI, they need AI to be successful. And simply because it's called artificial intelligence, there's this, there's this weird thing in the human and psyche that people are going along with it.
but I, I think this is just gonna be devastating to our industry, right? Because because think about it. So it's got it's gonna suck up for a, for a period of time. It's going to suck up all of this hardware. It's going to it's going to extract resources. It's going to extract people. It's gonna re- er, extract uh, money. You know, financial components, all of that kind of thing. Basically, to be put into infrastructure that th- there is no way that any of this shit makes sense. Right, with LLMs or AI, look, it was a hundred billion dollars or something, maybe two hundred billion dollars. Might it might 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 make sense. Open AI is a five hundred theoretically valued at five hundred five hundred billion dollars. They want to IPO 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 initial public offer at a trillion dollars. Right, uh, Anthropic is worth over two hundred billion dollars now. Uh, XAI apparently got a new funding round, so they're over two hundred billion dollars now. The, pro- the problem is not that the technology is not val- valuable. It's not that the technology isn't valid and cannot be scaled and the rest of it. But the, the economic proposition to this shit show just does not exist at this scale. And so what we're going to have is we're going to have a period of time that is going to seem short once it's over. It might be another year or two where basically this one segment is going to suck up all the fucking resources. And then you're going to have these companies that expand because of that that increased demand. And then when AI implodes, the way it's going to fucking implode, it is going to be just fucking devastating across the board. Um, So anyways, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, it's funny. Uh, again, I, like I'm saying, I'm literally, I'm literally reading the Andrew Ross Sorkin book about 1929 right now, and it, it's interesting when they had arguments. So arguments talking about the the bust, and one of the big arguments with the, the the stock exchange, right, Wall Street at the time, is that basically Wall Street sucked up all of the money that could have been invested into actual viable businesses in the United States. Right, so the idea was there were real va- viable factories in the United States that needed capital. Right, there were farms in the United States that needed capital. There were there were real uh, uh, things in the United States that needed capital and that could have expanded well and created profit and basically made everything better. But because the stock market was going through the roof, everybody in the world was putting money into the stock market instead of basically into these real companies. And then the issue was is those those companies didn't have money to be able to succeed and grow and then the stock market went boom and it made it worse for everybody else basically when i when i look at the ai boom going on right now i see i see this as whatever i know june was it june I burst in like october i don't know i feel like we're in june of 2029 for the tech world where it's just all all of the money, all everything is being sucked up into AI. And when it goes boom, it's gonna be bad for all of us. So, anyways, what do you think about this? What do you think about SK Hynix uh, increasing their uh, their production by 8x? And that 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 will that will not make supplies demonstrably better. And what do you think about one project, the Stargate project by OpenAI, consuming 40% of of the RAM that's going to be produced on a global scale? Does any of does any of this at this scale actually make sense to you? I don't know. Put your thoughts. Put your thoughts down below. If you like these videos, give us a thumbs up. If you hate these videos, give us a thumbs down. Call me amazing. Call me a dumbass. Just be a real lutnik and put a strong American comment down there. I expect your your comments to have thumbs the way our cows do. Why do our cows have thumbs? How the hell else are they gonna bench press? Anyways, do remember I do these videos in order to fund Silicon Dojo. Authority list, gatekeeper list, free to use your hands-on technology education that empowers you to do whatever the hell it is you want to do in life. Oh, we have many classes coming up. If you're interested, take a look at our schedule. These are in-person classes in Durham, North Carolina. You can take a look at our schedule. Uh, if you want to help support those classes, there's a donor box link down below. And with that, see y'all later.